easy, easy boy. This is Pom Pom, short for Pomeranch. Picked up a few hobbies while we haven't seen you guys. And as you can see, we are visiting a medieval castle today. It is called Kost. So I thought while we are doing that, I should tell you 10 misconceptions that people have about medieval castles and life there. Just give me a second. I will park Pom Pom somewhere around here. Gotta find the horse stables. Misconception number one, all medieval castles had dragons in them. No fire, no smoke, no other signs of monstrous presence. I guess we're good to go. Misconception number two, medieval castles had loads of people living inside. I feel like cinema definitely warped our perception of how life in the medieval castle looked like. In the movies, we often see dozens of servants and court people and aristocrats who are moving through the castle premises when in reality there were not so many people who actually lived in those castles. When we look at some Czech historical records, besides the owners of the castle, there were only maybe a baker, a cook, a couple of servants, three to four gatekeepers, the castellan and some male boy or male girl. Also, most people who worked in the castle, so the servants, actually didn't live inside of the castle palaces. This was only reserved for aristocracy and nobility. The servants normally lived on the premises, but in humble dwellings or just below the castle in Czech, it's called uh, Podhradi. I don't know. Misconception number three, you needed a garrison to protect a castle. Obviously in a lot of movies where we see sieges on the castle, we see hundreds of people attacking the castle and defending the castle, when in reality most castles couldn't actually sustain a big garrison. On a tour in Kost they told us there were only five trained soldiers who would protect the Kost castle, which is insane considering the size of the castle, but in reality you didn't have to have so many people they just had to know what they're doing and they had to have their weapons and other supplies also the small number of people who would be in the castle would be beneficial because in case the siege would last a very long time which some sieges were months long the supplies were not so quickly wasted misconception number four life in the castle was so romantic I'm sure some people fantasize about walking down the echoey corridors or cozying up next to a fireplace with a cup of meat. And yes, medieval people did have their fair share of fun, like hunting and going to spas for certain services or sewing for women. <laughs> But in general, I cannot say that life in the castle was romantic. First of all, there was a hierarchy between all the inhabitants of the castle. If you were a servant, you didn't have so much free time, maybe only like a couple times a year. And even if you were an aristocrat, you did have some responsibilities. I cannot help but also remember hygiene. And if you were blue blood, sure, you had access to a warm bath, but only once a week. But if you were a commoner, go help yourself in a creek, man. That doesn't sound so attractive to me. Talking about medieval atmosphere, let's also mention decorations of the castles. I feel like a lot of people have a false perception on how castles looked inside. Usually when they're trying to recreate the medieval atmosphere nowadays in restaurants or on movie sets, it's just dark stone everywhere with weapons hanging on walls and that cannot be further from the truth because weapons were stored in special places, usually a defense tower or some living quarters of soldiers. Just imagine, in the case of the siege, the soldier would first have to run to the wall disattach his sword from there and then run to the ramparts to protect the castle. That seems terribly impractical. So how were the castles actually decorated? Contrary to the popular belief, a lot of medieval castles were very colorful inside because they were painted with frescoes and also had tapestries. Unfortunately, a lot of these decorations did not stand the test of time. Misconception number six. Castle dungeons were places of torture and execution. I know that dark cellars with mock-up torture instruments might frighten some people, but historically dungeons were not the places where they would hold captives. Firstly, because not all castles had dungeons, and secondly, because towers were better guarded. Take for example Krivoklad Castle, where they imprisoned Edward Kelly in one of the towers. You can check out this video to learn the whole story. Misconception number seven. Any rich man could build himself a castle in the Middle Ages. Apparently money wasn't everything even back then, 
then, because not every aristocrat who owned land could actually build a castle. They had to have a permission of the king to do that. Just like today when you are building a house, I suppose. The thing was that king had to keep track of all people who owned castles because they could become a potential threat. So the king would give permits only to those aristocrats that he trusted. Building a castle wasn't an easy ordeal. Actually, how much would it cost to build a castle in Middle Ages? Some historians estimated the price to be one million grosh, which was a lot. To put it into perspective, a carpenter back in the Middle Ages would earn 20 grosh in a week, which means it would take him 1,000 years to save up enough of money to build a castle. But the building cost of the castle fades in comparison to the maintenance cost of the castle. That brings us to our misconception number eight. If I'd inherited a medieval castle now, I would be a millionaire. After the fall of communism, Czech nobility who was kicked out from their family estates got a chance to get their properties back through so-called restitutions. Diana Phipps Sternberg, for example, got her family castle back in 1993 and lamented that while the yearly earnings from the estate were 4 million Czech crowns, the expenses were 8 million. So no, unfortunately the castle does not guarantee you a lavish life. You already have to be rich to afford it. Not gonna lie, when I saw the ad for Divčihrad for 3.3 million, I got excited because it is cheaper than any apartment in Prague. But who do I think I am? I cannot afford to live there. 388 out of 461 existing castles in the Czech Republic are ruins. It doesn't mean though that they are forgotten. Right now we are in Trotsky, which is, as you can see, a ruined castle. Of course, there is not so much to see, uh, except the two towers, Pana and Baba, which translates as young and old woman or virgin and hag. And that brings me to our second to last fact about castles. A lot of people think that ruined castles were destroyed during some siege or some military occupation. And while Trotsky definitely falls under that category, it was attacked by the Swedish army in 30 years war and voila, this is how it looks like today. Not all ruined castles are. A lot of them were just dilapidating because nobody wanted to take care of them anymore. With the rise of industrialization, everybody gravitated towards city and also they lost their military significance. And finally, misconception number 10. Everything that looks like a castle is a castle. Let's play a little game. Which one is a castle? A or B? If your answer was both or B, you are wrong. Only A is a castle. A lot of people confuse castles and chateaus. Technically, translated from French into English, chateau means a castle, but the more specific translation would be manor house or country house. Castles had certain military functions. They were built at vantage points, so on top of hills or cliffs, to protect a certain area. In Czech, if you want to look for a castle, you need to search for the word hrad because zamek is chateau. For example, Hluboka nad Vltavo and Veltrusy are chateaus, not castles. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you liked it. My only tip for visiting any castle or chateau in the Czech Republic would be to check your weather forecast, which you would not believe it, but we did today. And the weather was uh, the worst out of all of our filming experiences. Anyway, see you next time. Bye.